chocolate and marshmallow. Chocolate and peanut butter. Dude, chocolate and caramel. Okay, chocolate's way too easy. Let me see here. Hold on. Okay. Um, six, four, three. That's nice. That's, oh, that's a good one. Two outs. Oh, oh, wait. Hold on, hold on. You're a smoky free 10 4 while doing 105 on the 20. Now, all right, baby. Or wild turkey, healthy splash of Canada dry and a whisper of bitters. Boy, you got uh, like an acoustic and something to put my feet up? Because <laughs> that's a night for me. I mean, we're talking bright sunny skies, the first day of AK, pocket full of dough, and a new haircut. You gonna have some stories to tell, my friend. Or a well-tailored herringbone suit in a London gray with a two tickets to an Oscar party, a little Bolivian marching powder in the breast pocket, and a certified <laughs> piece of slab in your arm. Well, hell, you might just get arrested tonight for finding too much of a damn good time. You ain't caught on yet? Gosh darn it. Then here's one more for you folks. A knit throw blanket from your Aunt Sue's, a bucket of Dad's brisket chili, a foot of snow outside, and a Tom Cruise marathon coming up on FX? Now that, my good folks, is one hell of a combination. And today, our contestants will be telling us just that. Their top five combinations. Now, he's reporting in from right by Capone's old place, the guy who secretly has been putting ricotta and green olives on everything the past five years. It's my gorgeous scoop of gelato, Brian Ernst. Hello, Brian. Hello. You're right about a few things there. <laughs> <laughs> I am desperately trying to pin that ricotta crime on you. I'm sorry, but I won't ever stop from now on. You okay. own up to that crime. That crime is yours. You know what? When you don't think it's a crime, then it's just a pleasure. So that's how I'm thinking Here about we go. it. And the next fella has only one interest in life. He's watched them play many times as they made their music. The greatest combination of them all. Stockton and Malone! <laughs> <laughs> I kid. I kid. Of course. No, no. This guy's true passion is neo-Christian rock. Uh, well, that's when he's not chasing that perfect mixture of uppers, downers, and sidewinders to make his beloved stones pop just so. It's Nathan Henenfent. Hello, Nathan. Uh, hi. Uh, when I stood before the magistrates recently, when I said it's not a crime if it's a pleasure, that that didn't seem to hold. <laughs> but <laughs> but I'll, I'll try again, I guess. <laughs> Boy, that that would have gotten me out of every single amount of jail time I've ever had in my life. It's like, hold on, hold on, I was having a good time. Like, oh. We're sorry, sir. Well, then please walk out the door. Thank you so much. Here's some cash for your troubles. Um, well, guys, I'm Mitch Brinkman, and I will never eat a donut without a cup of coffee and either news or sports on the TV. And my high school locker opened with a 1634 6. That's right. Today, our competitors will dare to dream up some of the most daring combinations to impress me and delight you, our listeners. Guys, don't forget, we have a completely revamped online presence. Go straight to bizbear.biz. It's brandy new. And actually, it'll just throw you straight to ubersynco.com where you can leave us a voicemail. You can check out featured episodes. You can delve into the history of our show. All the best stuff is there. Leave us suggestions. Leave us ideas for future episodes. We love interacting with our rabid fans. So check it out today and uh, listen tomorrow. Okay, but first, <laughs> let's do a quick rundown of the rules. Each player in the den has spent time with today's topic, arranging their top five answers in order of importance. Those answers have been submitted to the host who will moderate the game, awarding points to the player with the most poignant answer. Starting with their number five choice, we'll move up the ranks until we reach each of their top answers. But if both contestants happen to have the same answer on their list, well, we have an Uber, Uber stand out. You will hear the official Uber Cinco siren, and both players must reveal their answer and what number they ranked their submission. An Uber stare down is all or nothing, with one player earning three points. After all answers have been read, the host will reveal the final score. Wow, God, those rules are so good. I love listening to the rules. Hope you didn't skip right through them. <laughs> House rule today. Guys, I'm the host. I get to make one. Anyone that comes up with a combination I've never heard of or turns my opinion on a combination will earn bonus points. How many? I have no idea, but you'll find out. And folks, don't forget to stick around to the end of the show where I will rattle off my fast five list, things that are best solo. Huh? Get it? Mm, oh, clever. Different oh. from, the, from, the, from the episode. Oh, okay, cool. So here we go. <laughs> <laughs> Brian? 
Sorry to say, bud, but you lost the pregame skunk weed and Seagram's whiskey fueled late seventies disco dance party turned late night cocaine dinner at your buddy <laughs> Morty's house. How did you lose? Well, at Morty's, you didn't leave me any of the novelty party sub from that newfangled shop Subway. Eat fresh. Uh, yeah. So for that and ranting at me about your pigs on Mars screenplay while highland cocaine until four a.m. Nathan, I want you to start us off with your number five combination. Oh, well, it will be both a pleasure and a crime to do so. Uh, <laughs> I've got... Now, this is this is something you can do right in your own living room, but it Ooh. takes you to another time and place in a bygone era of glamour and glitz. This oh is gosh. the Rat Pack, preferably on vinyl. Any member of the Rat Pack will do, but, but preferably the, the chairman of the board. Sure. Then a nice glass of 12-year-old Bowmore Bo scotch. Mm-hmm table a uh, uh, hexagonal uh table with green felt some Ooh. rattling chips Ooh. and your two best buddies just bubba, bubba. sitting there drinking a little scotch playing some cards and you know maybe maybe if you want to dress up nicely uh you know you can do that you can do that sure. uh sure. there's a couple other albums you can throw on you know any once you go through the rat pack uh Collection, mm-hmm. some other old school Vegas. Uh, my one of my favorites, Billy Eckstein. I believe I'm pronouncing that right. No mm-hmm. cover, no minimum. This was from 1962, <laughs> recorded in a nightclub in Vegas, and awesome. you can you can taste the cigarette smoke in the wallpaper when you listen to this album. <laughs> it is mm-hmm. just delicious. Then you've got the another great combination within the combination: Frank Sinatra with Count Basie as an orchestra, 1964. And then if you want to get a little too contemporary, a little too flashy, when old Vegas really loses its charm, you go with yep. the Elvis televised special from 1970. Still works. <laughs> but yes, basically, yes. this is a big hint drop to you guys to get mm-hmm. the combination of the Uber Cinco combination to finally have that poker night I've been asking to have. <laughs> for, <laughs> and I'm going public with it. <laughs> oh my God. Okay. Well, um, just like we have done before, uh, let me check my calendar and I'll get back to you. You know, yeah. Um, <laughs> uh, Nathan, Nathan, I, I have two questions for you here uh, on, on your first um, uh, offering of this topic. That is number one, are you wearing your dress Jordans? And number two, what does that wall in the Vegas club taste like besides cigarette smoke in your imagination? <laughs> oh, man. Uh, well, y- yes, I would like to be wearing my my dress Jordans, which okay, are the, the the patent leather uh, white ones, the 95 edition when he came first came back. I think you know what I'm talking about. Oh, I know exactly what you're talking yeah. about. Mm-hmm. I could never afford them. I always lost it after them, though. Yeah. And then and then the uh, the wallpaper. Uh, so. They, they have those fake uh, little candelabras coming out of them, I'm assuming. And then there's uh, there's wood paneling uh, on, the, on the side. It's yeah, a sconce. Yep. Sorry. And uh, it, it's the <laughs> cigarettes, spilled brandy, mm. too much perfume, oh. and broken dreams. Oh, yes. Oh. Let me look here. Mm. <laughs> mm. Oh, it tastes like a lack of parenting. Oh, yeah. Oh. Mm. Hold on. Tastes like, ooh, TV dinners. Ooh, raising children. Oh, yes. Mm. <laughs> this was, uh, I always, I have this idea of old Vegas in my head because my grandfather, who I never met, was a, an avid poker player. And he built my oh. grandparents' house uh, out in the suburbs. So it was like very, like he built it in like the 30s. So it had sort of an old school decor, even when I was visiting it in the 90s. And in the basement, he had his like wood panels with his poker table. And he was, you know, he was a fan of, uh, you know, he listened to this old, old school music and stuff. And so I, I, my, my mom traveled to Vegas with them. And so I've only heard of it through, you know, bits and pieces and stories from my mom and my grandma. So this all kind of winds together into a bit of nostalgia for something I never had, if this makes sense. And sure. I want to share it with you guys. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah, again, let me just, um, I'm pretty sure. Ooh, yeah. Pretty busy next come. But yeah, but let me check, let me check the shed and, uh, yeah. Well, the me, last, I, last few times you said you're too busy recording Uber Cinco. <laughs> oh, well, uh, uh, yeah, you you know, and I will be preparing for Uber Cinco here coming up just like right. the next couple of weekends. So yeah, let me check the let me check the old the old days ahead, and we'll circle back, and I'll and I'll definitely yeah, um, I'll definitely uh, reconvene there on that topic. Uh, Brian, are you free, or, or what, what's your schedule look like? 
Um, I got a little black book around here somewhere. I just sure, gotta, sure, sure. Yep, yep, yep. Check I it out. See uh, how to update that thing. Wonderful. Oh, it's <laughs> empty. Cool. Oh. So it looks like I'm free, but I uh, got to match that up with my digital records to see. Sure, uh, sure, sure. Yep. If there are any conflicts, you know. Let's just circle back on that eventually. Um, and yeah, per- perhaps. Yeah, I mean, do we? Uh, am I even good at poker? I don't know. I probably would beat you pretty easily. Um, but uh, <laughs> as the only one with the felt table, I feel like I have to play a pretty large role. In this. <laughs> That's true. I have rattling chips. I've got a lot of chips. I think so. Do you, Brian? Right? And so, or Nathan, do, do you have any chips? Uh, they're they're not in my apartment. No. Oh. They're like they're four hour drive away in my parents' basement. I think. Oh. <laughs> well, well, look who's not even trying. Wow. <laughs> wow. I thought you were about to say they're not in my apartment, but they're in the closest row of a Jewel Osco. They're tortilla chips. You know, like that kind of thing. Uh, <laughs> Boo. I know, right? Yeah. Very bad. <laughs> very bad. Um, Nathan, I like, I mean, th- there's nothing better than. Getting a stogie all wet on the end as you're puffing smoke away, sipping on some whiskey uh, to make the taste of that stogie bearable. Uh, your your uh, your bow tie is untied and loose. Um, you've just come back from a benefit event where you know you were just making sexy eyes at a bunch of people, um, but went home with no one because you know what? You're just a treasure, and you're just playing <laughs> poker with a couple of your buds um, back at the man cave. So I love this. Um, I knew about this combination though, but but you did throw in some details like uh, the music and some of that sconch that I'd never heard of. So you might be getting a bonus point coming your way. I don't know. Nobody knows, but we'll find out later. Brian, give us your number five. <laughs> My number five, I feel like, is a combination for the history books and one that's going to be a little bit controversial Uh-oh. for for Mitchell Hostman Brinkman here. Yeah. Um, that's going to be Steve Jobs and being a dick. Now, this combination Hmm. worked pretty well. What device are we all using to connect Ubersenko today? Uh, A a, a PC. Liar. (laughs) I am, am, as you know, Brian, using the Mac that you gave me. (laughs) There we go. As we all know, Steve Jobs didn't invent anything. No. Didn't really make anything. He didn't do anything. All he did was a knack for saying if this will be good or not based on how it would he would fit it into his own personal life. But the one thing that always people forget about is the one thing I think he was actually good at was hiring. Mm. He knew how to hire good people. And that's really all you need to do and take credit for it. <laughs> it's, it's pretty much what can get you all the way to the top. Okay. Now, hire the best people, steal them from the best companies, build the better company and charge your products at an upcharge by making them premium. And all of a sudden now by being a dick to everyone around you and stealing people with probably bad business ethics from other companies, you, you, you create the best, most popular products in the world. So, well, hold on there. Uh, I, I take issue with, with the, the, the adjective of best, just the most popular products, perhaps. Yes, but uh, uh, I have to deal with all you Android people. and that, That's not really fun. I'm going to sit high on my pedestal today. Well, okay. I mean, let, let's, let's just remember facts are facts, and the majority of the mobile market are Android users, and the majority of the computer market are PC users. So let's just keep that in mind here, and let's just- And 95% of the world believes in angels. Now, I'm not going to take those numbers and, and apply them to this. I'm just saying- true. That is not true. No. Yeah. No, the no. Best because- is best, man. Things that work are great. And Brian, I love them. Brian, just because you believe in angels doesn't mean everyone else does. Okay, <laughs> so this whole like everyone believes in angels thing, you get, everyone has one, and we know your your guardian angel is Michael J. Fox from Back to the Future. We get it. We know it. Damn yes, right. yes. You're you you also want to wear a puffy vest just like him. Not everyone has yes. a guardian angel because angels aren't real. Brian, I'm sorry to break that to you. So, well. I beg to differ. Michael J. Fox is a, is a hero <laughs> and an angel in my eyes. Wow. Okay. Um, do, okay. I feel like you need to save this for me right now because what, what, what you didn't mention was was any of the design uh, like ideals that he pushed for. He didn't himself do. He just insisted upon having or seeing. No, um, here's a good story, though, about the dickish move he ever pulled, in, in, in my opinion. Okay. Is when the first uh, prototype of the iPod 
was brought into him yeah. and he said that he thought it was a little bit too clunky and they're like there's there's it's it's as small as we can make it and he walked apparently across his office and threw it into an aquarium and a bunch of bubbles came out of it and he's like see there's air in there there's more room make it smaller so okay that's the that, that's the dick move I'm, I'm i'm telling you about like yeah okay. that that him doing that makes him a dick but the combination made a better ipod so Okay. Take it for what you will, whether it's okay. lore or not. That's the story I'm sticking with for my number five. All right. I'm, I'm, I'm going to score these out here. Um, Nathan, you, you're getting three points. You put me right there. You actually direct me towards some music I might actually give a listen to I'd never heard of. So thank you for that. I Brian, I was right going to give you street. one. Yeah, thank you very yes. much. Um, also, if you ever go to to Las Vegas here in the near near future, go to Old Vegas, go to Binion's, get yourself a uh, a a Salisbury steak at the diner for like six bucks with a pile of mashed potatoes on the side, and I think the old fashions are like seventy five cents still there. But um, <laughs> it's not a great meal, but it feels like an Old Vegas meal. You know what I'm talking about? So um, no, yeah. t- it feels like dysentery nowadays. <laughs> <laughs> well. <laughs> That's what the alcohol is for. You kill all the germs Smart. with, with yes, the hooch. Yes, yes, yeah. yes. Brian, your little aquarium story, it was cute. I liked it. I'm surprised you had that just ready to go. So you're, you're getting extra point there. I would suggest you put that into the original defense to start with next time you have um, some fun little story ready to go. Okay. You're right. You're right. Yep. Uh, you know what? Let's snake it. I'm, I'm, I'm in a snake mood. Brian, back to you. You're number four. Uh, funny you mentioned your high school locker combination early on, because I'm going to give you number four, my middle school locker combination. Oh, 25, 10, 25. Now, one, it's the best combination ever because I still remember it. And this is coming <laughs> from the guy who had to go down to his counselor in high school because I forgot my high school locker combination over Christmas break. So <laughs> 25, 10, 25, I still remember. And what makes this combination even funnier proves how naive I was as a sixth grader my first time using a locker. Okay. In the first week of school, probably in the first few days, uh, there was a seventh grader who was probably half my height. So he was a, he was a little guy. Okay. I believe his name was Mikey Gianelli. If you're still out there. Ooh. Hey. He came by and asked me straight up, is your locker combination 25, 10, 25? And I said, <laughs> yes, what? because I'm an idiot. Wait, Wait, Mikey Gianelli figured out that they only shifted the locker, the locks on all of the lockers down like six lockers to change off the variety every year. Oh. Like he heard that as a rumor and then he counted the lockers down and he came up to me and just asked me my combination straight up. And sixth grade Brian said, yes. Oh, nothing ever happened to my locker. He's a straight up fella. Oh, OK. But OK. He just wanted to prove his point, And it wasn't until five minutes after that that I was like, I'm going to get robbed. <laughs> <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> But luckily, oh. it was middle school, and there was nothing ever of value in that locker. So yeah. Plus, it was plastic. You probably could have cut it open with a box cutter if you wanted to. <laughs> <laughs> would you? Right, would you right, guys right. like to know my locker combination? Well, yeah. Now, wait for for middle school or high school? Because there's a for difference. both. It was the same every year. Oh, that's right. Oh yeah, because the yeah same school all the way. Yeah. What, what was it? Yeah. We none of us locked our lockers. That is how small <laughs> our school was. We never oh locked God. our lockers. We didn't even have locks on them. Jesus! Wow. For, for, the, for the the from fourth grade through senior year of high school is when they gave us lockers. Never once did any of us lock them. Wow! Nathan, and I, I never had new... anything stolen. Not even. One. I want. Wow. I want a novel about your first few weeks in the big city. I want to know what that transition was like because it we'll fascinates be, me. We will be talking about that later in the show. <laughs> All right, perfect. I would say I can give you a pretty good, you know, close rundown of what of what some of the the activities were. But uh, that's right. You were a seasoned city boy. Well, and I was his roommate, so I saw him. Yeah, I saw yep. him. Yeah, um, every, well, every day and every night because we lived in the same room. So yeah, um, <laughs> oh, we, we were dating. What? No. <laughs> no, now Nathan, in your high school, what did the drug dealers do? Like they just get their drugs stolen, or like just no one stole their drugs out of their lockers? What they went there? to different schools. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Or they just just plucked it off the farm. They just grew it. <laughs> wow. Yeah. 
if, if, if we didn't lock our lockers at my high school, you, I, I would have gotten like probably a locker full of whipped cream once. I would have gotten a locker full of dildos once. I'm sure I would have gotten a locker full of like, I don't know, like, like, uh, like planting bricks, you know, those ones that you like line your garden with. I'm sure like it would have been absolute it, it hell wasn't, rain at my high school. If we had no locks, that's crazy to me. It wasn't because people didn't have bad intentions and didn't want to. It was because there were a hundred people in my high school. So it wouldn't have exactly yeah. taken Sherlock Holmes to crack the case. If somebody did something. <laughs> yeah. So the honor system was all we needed. Yeah. Wow, that's worst system of all. It's incredible, Brian. When you opened your locker in middle school, what was the first thing you saw on the door? On the door? Yeah, like a little poster or something, or like a picture of uh, I don't know um, Nicole Kidman, or a picture of Alicia Silverstone, or a I wasn't picture a, of Halle I wasn't Berry. A, a, a locker decorating guy. Well, you I weren't. was. I didn't use it very often, to be honest. It just had books on the top shelf, and I'd really probably old smelly gym clothes. That makes that was sense. Probably about. So all, all your books it. were in the locker. You never used it. Okay. Yep. Right. Yeah. That makes yeah. about sense. Uh, okay. I remember I used to time bomb Peggy Mueller, who was next to me. That What's was a di- time. You bomb? take her lock, you lock it, and then you threw it down the hallway. <laughs> <laughs> time bomb. Yeah. That's what we called the time bomb. <laughs> <laughs> that was the only fun you could do in your four and a half minute passing period or okay. whatever. Okay. I thought, I thought that was some sort of form of crop dusting. <laughs> <laughs> that's where I would fart in her locker and wait for her to open it later. Yeah, that's the time. <laughs> um, all right. Uh, let's not let uh, time uh, bomb any more. I don't know. That's that transition. Nathan, give us your number four. A for effort. Yep. All right. I'm going back to the uh, bygone era and the hanging with buds combination. This is oh. basketball shorts. Oh! Button up t shirt or button up shirt. Whoa! Nice button up shirt. <laughs> Simpler Times Logger from Merchant oh! Joseph's. Oh! And, and FIFA 10 on the Xbox. Yes! Yes! <laughs> yes! Oh, the number one combination in my heart. Oh my God. You're getting 80,000 bonus points. <laughs> so, this, for those listeners who are wondering why Mitch is in hysterics now, this was. The year 2009 to 2010, when me oh, and Mitch beautiful. and our dear friend Steve lived together oh. in a year where we just had a good time the entire oh. time. <laughs> and we we would, I don't know how it started. This is part of the reason I brought it up is because I think maybe Mitch knows the origin, but but we started uh, like... Two of two of us would be home in some combination and the other one would get home and see the other two wearing basketball shorts and a button up shirt. And it was another basketball shorts, regular shirt night. <laughs> and then <Yep>. we would <laughs> play FIFA into the wee hours and drink. And we've never been happier. And yeah. we, we actually brought this up uh, two weeks ago. Our dear friend, Steve got married and Mitch and I had the pleasure of giving the toast. And mm-hmm. we, here's how I know that we did a good job is we were, we were, we were killing it with, uh, with the jokes. Mm-hmm. And then we, we were, it was a movie theme thing. We were titling episodes of Steve's life as if they were movies. And so we had an inside joke just for Steve because when we'd be playing FIFA, Steve was the worst of the three of us at playing. <laughs> and yep. so he would frequently be losing at the end of the game and the final whistle would go and he, and he would always say, oh, I was in the middle of something! <laughs> even though, even though, and so yeah. Mitch, Mitch and I had this, this line where it was, Mitch says, Oh, the the movie was t- called "I Was in the Middle of Something," the FIFA years, which only Steve would have known was was anything. Yep. And people in the audience, like the momentum had carried them, so like they were laughing. Like I don't think anybody was that polite to laugh just out of politeness. I think like we, they had yeah. caught up, and they're like, "Oh, well, these guys are doing okay, so this must be a thing where we're supposed to laugh." Like, uh-huh. so it I counts. was very happy with that. <laughs> yeah. But yeah. but yeah, so so I guess that that just brings me to my question to Mitch is do you remember what the first time we did the basketball shorts regular shirt uh ritual where that came from? Why we did I, it? Uh, I I actually do remember because I came home from I was still um hold for sirens. I came home from class one night and I and it was during a, a colder month so I had on like jeans and a 
I think it was my, it was like my bright, it was like bright green and yellow and blue and something else plaid shirt. And I went into my bedroom, dropped my backpack and was like, I need to get out on that FIFA field right now. Um, <laughs> you know, spritz, spritz some beer in my hair and uh, threw my jeans off and put on the, the closest comfiest shorts I had, which at that point I believe were these bright red, super loose Maryland shorts, Maryland shorts. I remember. Yep. Them. And I just pulled them up to the bottom of my nipples. And this was like, <laughs> boys, here we go. It was still kind of chilly. So I had to keep the long shirt on. And then you guys were like, what, what are you, what the, what the frick, huh? Huh? And I was like, guys, basketball shorts, nice shirt night. Let's do it. And then you guys were like, okay, yeah. And then we just tossed them on and then played, uh, played fifa video games so our eyes bled so um yeah, yeah it was and beautiful time the, the last time steve came to town and and was stayed with us when we could play fifa we we still do this when we have the opportunity we do and we do. and i do have to tell tell tales out of school on mitch here is my favorite ever fifa moment was of course when then mitch <laughs> mitch was mitch was almost unbeatable mitch is one of the greatest video game players i've ever encountered and so he was Thank constantly kicking Thank me you. and steve's ass and I remember it. I can't remember who Mitch had as his team, but I was playing as AC Milan yep. and I beat him four to nothing. And I had also yep. discovered a little glitch where I could score goals from 50 yards and I didn't tell Steve and Mitch and that really pissed them off. But I beat was- Mitch four to nothing. And at the end of the game, he was sitting near the wall and he hit the wall with his fist and he left a little dent <laughs> and then he he went away. And then I, I put... I. I wrote on a little piece of paper the goal score is in the minutes and taped it over and it stayed there until we moved out of the apartment. <laughs> yep. You son of a bitch. It was like one of the four um, games I, I beat Mitch out of a thousand that year. Yeah. But you know what? W- when you are the best, any loss stings like you've lost a thousand <laughs> times, you know? And so. yeah, you 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 let us know. <laughs> yep. <laughs> yep. 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 I you know. Honestly, most people would say that's not my proudest moment, but that was my most, that was one of my most punchiest moments for sure. And I'm, you know, uh, and, and I, I won't, I won't apologize for it. So, um, cause you were cheating like that whole time. So, uh, <laughs> I mean, I mean, I was, I can't deny it. <laughs> yeah. Um, I, you know what guys, I'm gonna score this out. Nathan, you, you, you shot an arrow deep into my heart. You know what you were doing here. That's another three points. Um, Brian, I hope your quiver is ready to go for these, uh, uh, for these later rounds here, Brian, I gave you two points on your last one there. Um, and we're going to go back to normal here. So what would that even mean at this point? Don't know. <laughs> that means, that means I'm going to take go, the masks go... off. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, the Delta cases are going down in Chicago because people actually got vaccinated here. Sorry, Arkansas. Sorry, Mississippi. Sorry, Alabama. Okay, um, Nathan, give us your number three. All right, my number three. This is an American classic. Ooh. This is Steven Spielberg and John Williams with Tom Hanks to garnish. Ooh! Stare down, stare down. Here we go. Oh, okay, Brian. You heard Nathan's number three. It was Steven Spielberg. It was John Williams. It was Tom Hanks. Tell us what your number one was. Tom Cruise. Mm -hmm. Running. Yep. And surround sound. Okay, so what is one of Tom Cruise's greatest running movies? War of the Worlds. Who directed it? Steven Spielberg. Who did the music? John Williams. That's why. Oh, and what does he? What does he share with Tom Hanks? A first name. So that's our stare down today. Uh, <laughs> I love it. I love that. Right? I love the combinations you're doing. Yeah. I. You know what? I. I didn't know that John Williams did the music for War of the Worlds until today when I checked these lists out. So here it is. Uh, Nathan, give us your rundown on your number three. Well, this this is just the soundtrack of the childhood uh, and adulthood of so many Americans. It sounds like America, Steven Spielberg, the the great popcorn entertainment director, the greatest, Mm -hmm. you know, just pure entertainment cinematic blockbuster director there is. I don't think that's really in dispute. And then John Williams is like, it just goes hand in hand. I mean, it starts with, with jaws, which I don't even need to hum because everybody knows it. 
my personal favorite is Raiders of the Lost Ark. I don't think anything captured the spirit of the movie better than da, 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 da. it's just perfect. And then, you know, Close Encounters and E.T. and Jurassic Park all follow along that vein. The, just the great summer blockbuster. Good for the whole family. Great for watching on a, on a late night on your couch with the air conditioning blowing in your, your parents' basement or wherever the case may be. And then, then things take a little turn. And John Williams finally grew up when he was in his late nineties <laughs> or whatever. And they started, they started doing the serious movies out of nowhere. We got, we got Schindler's list, mm-hmm. which I mean, is just, you know, a haunting, very, very different movie from Jurassic park, obviously. And then saving private Ryan, also a classic. And then saving private Ryan is where we add the Tom Hanks in. And when I was looking at this, like my memory had, uh, had somehow made me think that Tom Hanks was in like 20 movies with Steven Spielberg, but I believe it's Is only it five. Oh, oh okay. uh, and it's, uh, so, so the ones that John Williams did with, uh, Tom Hanks and Steven Spielberg are saving private Ryan catch me if you can, which has that very playful score for the very playful mm-hmm. movie. And then wow. the terminal, which I have only seen once a hundred years ago, Oh, yeah. Rewatch then, just did that recently. It's very good still. Okay, and and then the post with with Meryl Streep, uh, yes. the Tom Hanks, Meryl Streep, Steven Spielberg, John Williams combination, and it's uh, you know it's fine, uh, and also and also Bridge of Spies. But the the through here is it's all of these uh, well most the vast majority of them very American stories, very you know American pride, Saving Private Ryan, obviously. Catch Me If You Can is Americana of the 60s and 70s. The Post is Political Scandal. And then Bridge of Spies is another, you know, back to the, the Cold War, USA, USA. Um, yeah, I, I don't really know, know what else to say other than uh, it. I think the main point for me is that all of it, it becomes so iconic and so intertwined with my memories of nostalgia of the 90s in particular that I thought these guys must have made 150 movies, all three of them. Yeah. But uh, yeah. there you go. Yeah. I um, Okay, so of those, is you said, is Raiders your favorite movie out of all those, or is it just the music is your favorite? I think it would be both, actually. Okay. Yeah. All right. Um, Tom Hanks, though. That's, that's the... Uh, if, we count, if we count Tom Hanks, then it would be, uh, it would be Saving Private Ryan. Yeah. Yeah. Although um, I, I mean, catch me if you can. I also love I Alex love a good friend of the show mm-hmm. who did a Tom Hanks fast five when he guest hosted. I it, texted him to set him up and he did not follow through. And I was very <laughs> upset where I did oh. the knock, knock joke, the Tom Hanks knock, knock joke from catch me if you can knock, knock. Who's there? Go fuck yourself. <laughs> and he dropped the ball. Alex, I'm coming for you. <laughs> um, I, I, I mean, damn it. You, you all right. I, I, I'll explain more when, when I, when I score this all out, but I, I mean, this is, these are, these are pretty much top all American, um, Filmmakers and, and producers and directors and yeah. And, and John Williams, of course, just, you know, is, uh, is an institution. Um, I, uh, this is giving me a lot to think about. Oh, okay. Uh, Brian, I, I want to hear about this, this other Tom that you've re- referenced and his running and the surround sound. Okay. We need to talk about the high bows, high knees, Ooh. full throttle, Ooh. wind in the hair, Tom Cruise. Ooh. I'm, t- I'm going through his IMDb right now. Yep. I can start picturing Tom Cruise running as far back as probably cocktail a little bit in that movie. Really picks up, though, in The Firm. Yep. As he's being chased as a lawyer while he's on the uh, hunt for something. Then you have Mission Impossible. Yep. Then you get into Vanilla Sky, where he's sprinting down Times Square. Yep. Then you get Collateral, where he's sprinting towards Jamie Foxx. Then you have War of the Worlds, where he's sprinting away from aliens. Yep. Then you have Tropic Thunder, where he's sprinting in his own office as Les Goodman. Amazing. Then you get the real runs now. This is where we get to Mission Impossible, Ghost Protocol, uh, a Jack Reacher, 
Edge of Tomorrow, and Rogue Nation. Mm-hmm. This is where Tom Cruise has got a helicopter budget now. That man is full sprinting on the top of bazaars, mm-hmm. through the streets, and his arms are almost like windmills. It's amazing. But I think peak Tom Cruise running unfortunately happens in probably the worst Tom Cruise movie, which is The Mummy, where he really heightens oh it up. God. And you can see it in yep. the trailer where it's like he went extra Tom Cruise with yep. the bows. And uh, it's, it's just, I'm hoping to see some of it in Maverick. I'm hoping to see it in some of his untitled SpaceX project. I want to see this man run knees to bows in space if possible. Yep. Now, this paired with action soundtracks, exploding cars, running away from aliens, in your surround sound, I want to be Tom Cruise in those moments. Yeah. Tom Cruise. Beautiful. I, you know what? I, 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 I deign you to check out one of his earlier films as well. Also, a running Tom Cruise. He plays a high school football star, uh, Stefan Jurdovich, uh, G- in a dying. All the right moves. Yes, in a dying still town. All the right moves. Um, it's not the most suspenseful movie, and and you do think at some points during the film, boy, Tom, you're a real bad boyfriend, but um, it's still- Does he run? He does I'm run. There. Of course he does. I'm there. He I'm runs, there. he sweats, he stares with an awful amount, or uh, an awfully um, uh, 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 in, intense amount of, well, intensity, actually. Um, yeah, I mean- <laughs> <laughs> It's, it's nothing been there. like intense cruise intensity. It's, it's been I, there since, since the beginning. I have a question to, to yeah. you two that are have seen more Tom Cruise running scenes than me. God, love it. Yep. Did what, what Tom it? Cruise was he a natural sprinter or did somebody coach him on his form? Because it's quite precise his, and consistent. I think he's invented his own form. What he has can't be taught. I think that okay. If you go back and look at the scene in Cocktail when his eventual love interest, Elizabeth Shue, her friend is passing on the beach from too much champagne. He's running down the beach with her. He's not going um, up and down with his arms. He's kind of going like side to side like a normal guy. You know, that's that's um, that's not efficient movement. I, that's no. But but in that scene, his knees do travel in an efficient you know arc up and down. So I would say that the natural talent was there, but. Honestly, I wouldn't be surprised if there's some retired athlete somewhere in the late 80s who hires themselves out as like a athletic consultant to movie stars and he hires them for like a month to make them look like an athlete. That's my guess. I, that is my guess. A follow-up question. How much champagne do you have to drink to pass out on just champagne? That's Um well, as his Bottles. character says, no matter how much you have, it's perfume going in and sewage coming out. Uh, and, <laughs> uh, but I, I, they, they don't say how much he's had in the film, but I, for me personally, I'm, I'm drinking three bottles before I'm, I'm passing out in a hot sand beach. So <laughs> yeah. personal experience. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, you guys, this is, this is tough. You both ha- have given me a lot to think about. And, Oh, Brian, I, I'm giving you extra bonus points because you're just you're just you're, you're getting you're getting my um what's it called well it's it, I'm calling it the T zone which normally refers to the area in your face that's very oily but T in this case stands for Tom you're hitting my Tom <laughs> zone here and you're getting three <laughs> bonus points but Nathan has won the stare down because Saving Private Ryan was the first DVD I ever purchased in my in my entire oh. life. Wow! At the age of twelve, I was like, "Mom, this is the movie I want." Is this Good choice this harrowing World War II drama? <laughs> uh, so, yeah. uh, Nathan, you're getting that one. Brian, I, I, I'm sorry to say, your number one is now off the board. Uh, but uh, yeah, um, but guess what though, Brian? It's time for your number three. So throw that at us. All right, my number three mm-hmm. combination is something you boys will be very familiar with. Okay. It's grain, hops, yeast, and water. Talking about beer, baby! Oh! <laughs> Woo! <laughs> Bud Weiser, Brian, Bud got- Weiser, Miller Light, Paps Blue Ribbon. Sorry. <laughs> Crack open this Bud Light aluminum cannon. <laughs> oh, yeah, I'm ready. Oh, my God. And for the listeners at home, I want to make sure that they see that I was drinking a, a very nicely flavored milk mm. stout from a much nicer brewery beforehand. Oh, wait, a, a milk but stout? You never bought, huh? A milk stout from what brewery? 
It's a peanut butter milk stout from Left Hand Brewing, if anybody's interested. Oh, my gosh. But this is a Bud Light fresh off the line. And if anybody knows anything, mm-hmm. the worst thing about throwing away shitty beer means you're still wasting beer. And we cannot have that unless it's an IPA and you can flush that shit right down the toilet. <laughs> now, we're talking about good beer. Mm-hmm. Now, I should probably add fruit to this list for me or wheat specifically to the grains column because that's the stuff I like. Mm-hmm. I like a nice hearty hearty weiss beer but um yeah it's just beer man it's got to be on my list it's one of the most uh, magical combinations it's probably the oldest combination on any of our lists yep we're talking about egyptians made beer for yeah. god's sake they did I mean, it's it's so good somebody figured this out yeah and we still do it today that's that's always and been I, my question is with alcoholic beverages is how did this happened, whereas like somebody left something out in the sun too long and it fermented. Somebody took a drink of it and was like, oh, God, that's horrible. What if I drink the whole thing? Maybe I'll feel amazing. Like, when was that moment? I, I've i never been able to put now, that together. In, 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 in the past, when you were not allowed to do or able to do dishes or things of that nature, I got a feeling a lot of makeshift pots and pans sit around a lot longer than they would have in the modern age. Yeah. And when you're also desperate... And you really, really do need food or drink. You're willing to try anything. And when the guy found out he got drunk on it, he said, write that recipe down. Then that's what happened. Yeah. In my opinion. Well, I, oh, I think- man. What a beautiful case of dysentery. <laughs> <laughs> that's two for this episode. Let me throw one more idea out there. I, I'm not sure who, who came up with salting meat or like preserving, you know, food in that case. But I would assume that maybe someone at some point put fruit in like a clay jar and was like, let's bury this and hope it keeps. And they took it out and they're like, oh, that doesn't taste like grapes, but it tastes like something else. And now I feel like I want to have sex again, you know, like that kind of thing. You know, (laughs) (laughs) I think the real question is what came first, beer or bread? Probably bread. And then like a super runny version of bread went a little bit too far and became beer. I mean, that's got to be where it is. Yeah. That would be my thought process on that. Okay. Well, everybody- I can't wait till we play poker and have a bunch of runny bread, guys. <laughs> <laughs> everybody knows the classic phrase, I remember when I had my first beer, as like an insult to someone. But I am actually yes. curious. Brian, when was your first beer and do you remember what you had? I finished my first full beer, not taking a sip, but actually drinking a beer. Sure. It was on draft. It was a Heineken, and it was in the south of France when I was 19 years old. What? The, the south of ever France? Finished. That's when I had my you're, first beer. Wow. You were on the a Heineken goddamn Riviera? It, <laughs> yes. <laughs> it's amazing. It was, I ordered a Heineken because it was the only name I recognized. And I was like, <laughs> someone who doesn't know beer, I'm like, well, this is a local beer here, right? That's not from not that far away. So I'm going to try that. It wasn't brewed in St. Louis or Milwaukee. So <laughs> no, but uh, yeah, that is where I enjoyed my first full beer. And then I oh. had my first legal beer across from Mitchell. I had a magic hat number nine Ooh. at Wells on Wells on my 21st birthday in Chicago. Oh, man. I actually I actually you say that now and I my 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 memory pulls pulls moments and paintings from that. From you that bought me my first legal beer. Yeah. Oh my God. Wow. That. And he intends feel- to buy you your last. Oh, wait. <laughs> <laughs> wait, hold on. What's that over there? Why are you sprinkling a pill or something in my beer, Mitchell? Oh, nothing, nothing, nothing. Drink it, drink it, drink it, drink it, drink it down. What's in this Bud Light? <laughs> oh. Sign- oh, no, it's just shitty Bud Light. <laughs> <laughs> Sign your assets over to me first. Thank you very much. Um, Nathan, same question to you. When was your first beer? Where was it? Who was it with? Do you remember what it was? I very vividly, and I, I we get to bring our friend Steve Moore back into the uh, story time. Oh. Uh, so I w- it was July fourth of two thousand five. It was a, mm-hmm. just about a week before my nineteenth birthday. I had already graduated high school at this point. Okay. I did not drink at all in high school because if you got caught drinking, you had to miss a third of your ath- of every athletic season for any sport you went out for. Oh, so damn. I didn't I didn't want to miss any basketball time. So I didn't yep. drink at all in high school. Fourth of July party. And uh, Steve was there. This was before the fireworks. I had never had a beer. Everybody knew this. And Steve was out on the barn, a uh, little loft area where the party was going on. 
he saw my sister's car pull up. I saw Steve disappear off the roof of the barn. I saw him emerge sprinting Tom Cruise like <laughs> towards the car <laughs> about 50 yards. I got out of the car. He placed a can of Miller Lite in my hand and then turned and sprinted away back into the barn. <laughs> and that was the first beer I ever had. Wow. That's incredible. That's that, that That's a great story. It sounds like a scene straight out of, you know, uh, Mission Impossible where Tom Cruise runs up and like places a bomb and then runs away before it, you know, explodes or something like that. Um, uh, before you move on, Mitch, I, uh, yeah. as I mentioned off mic that I took the Anheuser-Busch tour in St. Louis this past weekend yeah. where I got this Bud Light and there was one fact they said on the tour that I thought would rattle both of your brains. Ooh, okay. Um, they said that they only sell beer that has only been sold. So therefore they don't make beer and put it in a storage facility. Wow. It was off the line into a truck and delivered somewhere. Yep. But they do have a storage facility that if they were to fill would store 750,000 cases of beer. Okay. How Wait. long, if we ran the lines shut off, how long do you think it would take the Midwest to go through their storage facility? I'm going to 750,000 cases of beer. 750,000 cases of beer. I'm going to say, I'm going to say three days. 17 and a half hours. Damn it. Oh, <laughs> Yes. Wow. Yeah. So if those lines go down, we are effed, boys. Or at least the people who drink Bud and Bud Light. Wow. <laughs> well, 17 and a half hours. Some of my favorite um, uh, uh, facts or whatever, like, you know, uh, did you know on, on smaller yeah. brewery tours, they always say things like the amount of beer we brew in a year and sell is half of what Budweiser accidentally spills off their line. Yes. Which Sam is, Adams famously uses that. Or is it Sam Adams? Yeah, yeah. But you know, like yeah. it's like you know, even smaller ones are like we're we're like one quarter of one small speck of gum on the boot heel of Budweiser. You know, says yeah. And when we did this, they were like, "This is their main facility." They're like, "This is one of eleven facilities." Wow. To be able to supply the world with enough Budweiser, and I was like, "And you go to you go to a small brewery, and you see their fermentation tanks, and they're." They're large. They're about two stories tall. Yeah. They look to be about, I don't know, the circumference of a living room. Yeah. They're pretty big tanks. Yeah. Then you see these tanks and you're like, holy shit balls. Mm -hmm. And when they tell you they can fit 1.2 million 12 ounce servings in a single tank. Holy shit. And the warehouse is filled with these tanks. It's, it's an impressive operation. Like, I don't like their product that much, but... To be able to make that much beer that quickly is kind of insane. And the Midwest drinks that much beer in 17 hours. Oh, my God. <laughs> What's weird is, like, my dad always would drink some cheap shit growing up, but, like, his cheap beer of choice was always Ice House. Oh. he Because yeah. of the high alcohol content. He's like, I buy less, drink less. It's, that's the one I like. Yeah. Or, or, or Miller Lite once in a while. Mm-hmm. Miller High Life then for a while, but it was about, like he was always a Miller guy. How about the classic Milwaukee's Best Ice? That oh. wins the award for the worst <laughs> beer I ever drank. And I'll give you oh. both one question, one guess as to where I drank it. Um, Western Illinois University dorm rooms. You're very close. Ah. Homer's house in downtown Roseville, Illinois. <laughs> oh, I've been to Homer's. <laughs> He's been to Homer's. <laughs> oh, God. Homer's is a Homer's, Homer's much like. The 1950s era basement with wood paneled homers covered in wood paneling, right? Love it. It's like our my basement. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Uh, that's all I uh, affirmative. Okay. Yes. That's all I, <laughs> I think we, we had a lag there. Sorry. Oh, okay. Yes, <laughs> okay. Um, guys, we need to roll on here uh, to to, to y'all's number twos. Um, let's just go back to let's go back to Nathan. Give me your number Wait, how two. many? How many points did Brian get for for that uh, number three? Oh, I immediately wrote down three as soon as he said "beer, baby." <laughs> so yeah, um, yeah, Brian, Ooh. give us your number two. Beer doesn't get me drunk, but it sure makes me red. All right, here we go. <laughs> number two, uh, I have carbonated water, okay, diet coke syrup, okay, and thick straws. From your local McDonald's. Oh! Hey! Oh! <laughs> 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 
ba 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 Here it comes, a beautiful new stare down. All right. I don't know if I can sing that well. I'm trying to. Okay. <laughs> um, <laughs> I gave it a shot. Okay, Brian, you're throwing down. You're Okay, you're saying these things as a combo. It's Diet Coke with a thick straw. Nathan, what is your number two? My number two is the number one. Number one with a Sprite from the Big M Supper Club. That's the Big Mac meal from McDonald's. Okay, so I am I am a uh, I am a Philistine when it comes to the fast food. I googled Big M Supper Club in five different ways. <laughs> <laughs> M Supper Club in quotes. Big M in quotes. Big M Supper Club in quotes. Just M Supper Club in quotes. I thought it was a supper club that had two locations in Chicago and Crystal Lake. Both I was like, why would Nathan go to these? And then finally saw something on Reddit about someone referring to the Big M Supper Club as McDonald's. And I feel I felt so stupid. So um, <laughs> and I was like, I was like, I was like, is this at first and when I first saw it, I thought this is a, a restaurant near Nathan's hometown. The number one is probably like a country fried steak, you know, with some, you know, some nice gravy or something. It's like something straight from childhood. No, this is my McDonald's it's everywhere. <laughs> okay. Um, Brian, why does why does this combo make your life uh, float, if you will? What's the best Diet Coke you've ever had, Mitch? Uh, from McDonald's. From the There you go. The this is why. <laughs> extra syrup, extra wide straw. Sure. So it's sweeter, it's got more flavor, and more of it's getting to your mouth at once. Yep. This is why all three of these things are important. McDonald's figured out the recipe. And I got a feeling they're probably doing the same thing for Sprite. Yep. It's got to be extra syrup and the wide straw because their Sprite is pretty much on point as well. There is. Yeah. There's no better Sprite than the McDonald's Sprite. Yeah. Correct. And uh, I'm more of a cola man than I am a a lemon lime man. But when they used to have that wild berry Sprite, whatever that LeBron one was. Oh, that was like one of the best like summer quench thirst. Like it was the best drink I ever had. Do you think that's similar to the uh, Mountain Dew Baja Blast? No, 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 no. It was like, the Christmas of a Sprite with a little hint of berry. Mm. It was a very limited time, and it was a very, very good summer for me. Wow. Um, Those were I, the days. I, Those were the I, days. I, I will say Sprite just put out a new flavor, Sprite Ginger. It pairs perfectly with whiskey. Uh, pro tip. I have had that with whiskey, and you were right. Oh, my God. It's delicious. Okay. So good. Back to the Mickey D's. Okay, Brian, what is Diet Coke delivered to you? on a day-to-day basis or whatever, every other day basis, when you have this, when do you choose to go get that Diet Coke and what are you looking for? I go to get that Diet Coke when I need a, a either a, a pick-me-up okay. or I'm waiting for something. Like, like there's like, oh man, I'm going to be, I have to drive somewhere or I got to go somewhere. Man, I really want a Diet Coke on the way. Interesting. Just want something to sip on. That's what I want. And it's not even about like the food, like going there to eat. Like I will, I probably go to McDonald's more just to order a single drink and leave the drive through more than I order food. Interesting. Just because I just I just want a Diet Coke. It, it sounds so good. Do you ever order or, the Diet Coke with light to no ice just to get straight Diet Coke? I have, definitely. Have? Oh, interesting. Okay. And I, I, I live with somebody who always asks for extra ice, and it infuriates me oh about how much God. little product anywhere we go that she's paying for, <sighs> especially at Starbucks. Like, come on, extra ice at Starbucks? You kidding me? A large anyway. iced coffee with extra ice at Starbucks. You're getting like eight ounces of coffee in that. That's it. You're getting a tall. You're getting a small. Huh? That's what you're doing. You, uh, but you're same, paying. Same thing at McDonald's. But you're paying. But you're paying large prices. Correct. Oh but at least at God. McDonald's, it doesn't upset me anyway because every single soda there is a dollar. Yeah. So it's like you know what? Whatever. Yeah. Okay. No skin off my taint, as they say. Now, Brian. <laughs> yes, they say that. <laughs> <laughs> Brian, the Bud Light talking. I can attest to this. We recently hung out. We went and got um, what was it? Um, Raising Canes, and then we went to McDonald's just for the fountain drinks. I get that. I, mm-hmm. I, I understand it. I'm hearing you. I'm there with you, Nathan. Tell us about the Big Mac. Oh <laughs> well, I'm glad you asked. Um, like a talking head pundit, like after all, tell us about the Big Mac. <laughs> Well, there's there's a there's a personal side to this, and there's a yeah. universal side to this. I'll sure. start with the universal side. Ooh, uh, is that the number one with the sprite 
Well, the Sprite is is personal taste. You can have the Diet Coke. That's fine. I have no qualms with that. Yep. But the Big Mac and the McDonald's fries, that is America in food form. That is everything good and bad about this country in one <laughs> paper bag yep. served through a window. <laughs> because it is the absolute most terrible thing for you at the cheapest price possible mass produced and it is the most successful and dominant franchise in the world yep. it is everything about this country that is great and terrible all at once and to, to shift that into the personal it is for me in the travels i have done it is the embassy it is the American embassy. And this starts, and Brian, you, you asked about this earlier. Yes. My first week of college. This is where we'll start. So the, there was, there, there were a few times, there were a few times I wanted to jump in earlier about childhood and whatnot, but I had to save it for this, yep. is the McDonald's, it, Mitch, you were, you were saying like the Big M Supper Club, that was what we referred to it jokingly at home because... Mm -hmm. We had so few nice restaurants in the town. In the town that I grew up in, there wasn't a McDonald's. The nearest McDonald's was 11 miles away in the next town over. But it was yep. it's it's literally stick throwing distance from the hospital where I was born. Wow! And so I've been to this McDonald's a thousand times. One of the things we did on weekends was we would cruise the strip in Monmouth. Ooh. Monmouth is diamond shaped. You would at the very north end of town is the McDonald's. Then they have a circular uh, roundabout in the middle of town. You would yep. what you would do is you would drive from the McDonald's. You would circle the roundabout. You would go back up. You would drive through the McDonald's parking lot. You would see who else was cruising. You would wave at them. One out of every twenty five times, you might stop and talk to somebody. That was how we spent some of our evenings. It was terrible. <laughs> But then we, we come to the college years, uh, and I'll, I'll backtrack to high school in a second, but to go with the American embassy theme, uh, we got to the college years, and the first night that Mitch and I, the first day Mitch and I met back in 2005, like my parents dropped me off at college, I felt like a lost little boy in a big city, which is exactly what I was. And I was all alone and I was just a little overwhelmed by everything. I was like, I've always wanted to live in a place that wasn't 900 people. And now here I am in the city of 3 million and I don't know what to do. I don't know anybody, but I knew where the McDonald's was and I knew it was familiar. And that was where I had my first meal in Chicago. And then when I was living overseas, if I was having like really, really dark days, I took some comfort in going to a McDonald's and knowing that the number one with a Sprite tasted exactly the same as it did anywhere in the world, including right by the place I was born. And that is because I believe every Big Mac in circulation was made in 1974 <laughs> and they've just have them in the warehouse next to Budweiser and they're just <laughs> sending them out frozen <laughs> and that's what we're eating. Uh, but the, the Big M Supper Club thing came from... Uh, High school, like my junior and senior year of high school, I played on a recreational softball team. And that was what we would do after every game is we would all drive to McDonald's and get our Big Macs. And my favorite ever trip that I remember was uh, in an economics class. We watched uh, Super Size Me, oh. which was obviously made to show you how disgusting McDonald's was. And they showed it to us at 2.30 p.m., Y'all, uh, y'all went to McDonald's. and we went straight. We drove the eleven miles to McDonald's right afterwards because it just made us want. That was what our metabolisms and our level of activity were doing at the time. It didn't kill us. So I have a sentimental, universal, and patriotic connections with the number one with a sprite from the Big M Supper Club. Wow. Okay. Uh, I'm going. I'm going to go back to Brian just for a second here. Brian, mm -hmm. you're a new McDonald's franchise owner. You're allowed to remove two items from the menu. What are you removing? Ooh. Um. Is it ice cream? Is it a sandwich? Is it is it salads? Is it uh, is it like a like a holiday special item? Is it? One of those godforsaken, we do chicken four different ways, whatever items. What is it? 
Well, they've already done this to me. They took away the chicken wraps that they used to have. I used to eat those in college all the time. Oh, they basically were chicken wraps that like were in a nice tortilla, but it was like the deluxe versions. You got a real piece of tomato and a real piece of lettuce. <laughs> So wait, first of all, wait, wait, I'm bringing wait, wait. that back. You just you just referred to a real tomato yes. and a real lettuce as deluxe. Oh boy, that's what it is yeah. at McDonald's. That's like true. if you want something with real food in it, you got to get the deluxe. That's true. That's what they consider it. I mean, most people would probably remove the fillet of fish. No, I don't mind the fillet of fish. What are you removing? I'm not asking about. Most I don't people. know. I like a lot of things there. Okay. All right. Well. You, Go to Nathan. I got to think about this. Nathan, do, do you have any items you would remove tomorrow from the McDonald's menu if you were a franchise owner? I, I mean, I, I I only order this, so I don't know what else is on the menu. <laughs> <laughs> so, so literally you can oh, go to a restaurant well, co- called- Coffee. Fine, coffee. Oh, coffee, okay. Yeah, I mean, I, I okay. just literally don't know what else they have. I need chicken nuggets with barbecue sauce, sure. But other than that, I'm lost. Okay. I'm getting rid of the spicy chicken sandwich because that's stupid and Dr. Pepper off the menu. We don't need we don't need space for this crap. Whoa. Shots fired at Dr. Pepper. Yes. I love Dr. Pepper, especially Diet Dr. I know, Pepper. but if you go to McDonald's, even if you love Dr. Pepper, are you getting Dr. Pepper? Well, no, I'm getting Diet Coke, obviously. But Correct. Yeah. So it's like I want an extra box bag of Diet Coke syrup. Okay. 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 Or change it for Coke Zero. If they get Coke Zero on the menu, I'm oh, talking about a game changer. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And and I know Nathan it loves the Coke Zero as well. Um oh, yeah. guys, this is oh, tough. Oh yeah. This is tough. This is tough. This is tough. I'm gonna give it uh, <laughs> you sons of bitches. I love both of you, but I gotta s I gotta screw one of you over right now. I'm gonna I'm gonna give it to Brian because I've seen both him order this, drink it, and then also I've seen the refuse in his car as well. So I'm going to give him three. Um, <laughs> that is very true. <laughs> I'm give Nathan zero on the I one. I do drive in a pigsty. Um, I, no, I, I didn't say that. I uh, maybe just a large diet coke, um, you know, cemetery. But um, Nathan, <laughs> I got one of those too. Yeah, uh, Nathan, you have your number one left to give us. Please give us that, Brian. You're 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 sitting pretty right now, so just uh, relax, listen, and ask some questions if you feel like it. Okay, uh, number one, this is uh, Bucky and Hunter. And these, Bucky and Hunter were... Wait, 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 hold on, hold on. Are these Joe Biden's kids? <laughs> <laughs> you can't, no, no, no. You can't do the mm. president's kids, Nathan. I'm sorry, but that's just... It's, those are slam it, dunks. You can't do... Well, they're, you can't do. They're, Bucky and Hunter aren't human, actually. We knew it. We knew it. The whole we knew it. Okay, Hunter Biden's <laughs> that laptop, was in the laptop. Yes, turned him into a robot, and he is okay. No, sorry, keep going. Bucky and Hunter were the pony and the beagle that lived at my grandparents' house. Aww. And this was <laughs> a special connection. So okay. Bucky had been around uh, through about three beagles. Uh huh. <laughs> Snoopy was first. Snoopy was great. Snoopy okay. lived into old age. Then there was Daisy. Poor Daisy got hit by a car after six months. That was rough. Oh. Oof. But then Hunter came in. Hunter lived to be about 17 years old. Bucky lived to be 30 years old. Wow. Bucky Bucky, and my sister were the same age. Wow. And my sister's still alive. That tells you how old my sister is because Bucky died a while ago. <laughs> oh. <laughs> I'm sorry, Laurel. 50 <laughs> yo, on yo, the You'll always be older than me. Um, <laughs> 52. So, <laughs> so, so Hunter shows up yep. and we'd really never seen anything like this before. And my, my grandpa said he'd never seen anything like this before. And he'd lived on the farm his whole, whole life. And because nobody does that much crime with a laptop with foreign governments in like less than six months period. It just doesn't <laughs> well, happen that often. Hey, right? my, my grandpa Sorry. is still on the run somewhere in Eastern Europe. Let's not blow his cover. <laughs> um, <laughs> so... So, uh, Hunter, Bucky was a very gentle pony and he was, by this point he was, he was, you know, like probably 20 years old. So he's in his, his golden years and Hunter was just devoted to Bucky. He just, he, Aww. he'd like stayed by his feet. He would, he would jump up and, and lick his face when it was time Aww. for, uh, when it was time for Bucky to eat, he would run over and make sure he got his food. And Aww. he, when, uh, 
you know, he, he would lead the people to the pony. When the pony came over, he would come running. He, the pony took precedence. You know, Hunter loved us and we would all pet him or whatever. But if Bucky came trotting or stumbling over as he did in his later years, <laughs> Hunter would be like, OK, we've all got to go be there. And then he would actually sleep curled up next to him. He was so devoted oh. to him. And uh, at one point, my sister took a bunch of pictures and they actually submitted them to, uh, I can't remember the name of the magazine and I couldn't get a hold of my sister tonight to ask her which one it was, but they actually ran a story about them using the pictures that my sister took. This went oh, out in a uh, national publication and they Maxim? both... Maxim? <laughs> it, and yes, it was Maxim. Uh, and they got a good animal section the hot farm I'm, animals or cute farm animals. oh Excuse god yep, uh, sorry. but but yeah they, sorry, it was it was uh it, it was really really a, an adorable beautiful little thing that our, our family all all loved and, and we were lucky wow. that, that bucky lived to be 30 hunter lived to be about 17 and then wow uh, I think I, I believe it was uh, Bucky went first and it was went like that. Those old stories oh. about elderly couples where when one goes, the other one sort of loses, which I believe are apocryphal. Like, you know, I don't necessarily buy into the sentimentality of that, but that was kind of how it happened yeah. in this situation is Bucky went and Hunter sort of thought, well, my my best friend is gone. I believe it's my time. And so he shuffled off his uh, mortal coil. But we have we have great memories of the, the wholesome cookouts at, at grandma and grandpa's house with, with Bucky, uh, the, the cookouts, which I mentioned on our last episode, mm-hmm. they were about 10 yards away from uh, the fence where Bucky would come over and we feed him grass. And so Hunter would be laying by the fence and we'd be there by the campfire. Bucky and Hunter, my number one combination. Oh, I am. I am on the verge of crying right now. Um, <laughs> I literally am. I've, <laughs> You, you you guys know I'm a I'm a doggy daddy and I and I love my animals now and uh, I've been watching a lot of Ted Lasso recently. Do not exhale, do not exhale with fury, Brian. You keep that. Nathan in- is so lucky. I'm not hostess. Yeah. Yep. <laughs> um. But Nathan, 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 you didn't you didn't describe Bucky's um ponytail at all you didn't describe his pony mane at all you didn't describe his pony coat at all so i'm only giving you two points boom i'm also hard i'm not a i'm not a big old did i did i tell you sap no did i tell you about what 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 bucky's favorite thing was is uh if let me guess carrots wow or apples wow no well he he loved crab apples from the crab apple tree that was in grandma's front yard but but if you would if you get down if you would big max from mcdonald's I don't know if I ever gave him one, but, but if you, if you got down, if you just kind of lightly, just went into like right into his, uh, into his snout, into his nose, he would, he would kind of exhale back out at you, Aww. which, uh, that was his, that was the way of giving, giving you a little, giving you a little friendly smooch. Oh, I see. Okay. Well, um, you're still getting two points. That is nice <laughs> though. Um, that did, that did kind of remind me of the behavior I just taught my dog Waldo uh, a couple of days ago. I taught him the behavior. I say honkers and he bops his nose to my nose. It's very cute. So, yep. Just a, just a little flex there as a dog owner here. Um, okay. <laughs> I need to tally up the final scores, which means you guys have to busy yourself with a little topic. So what I want you guys to talk about is, um, your, f- uh, um, your, your most difficult McDonald's orders ever, whether it be drive through or in person in the store. Tell me about a really hard time about it or, or don't tell me. Talk about it. Talk about it. Go for it. Go. Anytime I've ordered anything without ketchup because I don't like ketchup and they all it's they don't care. They don't care. And I don't blame they them. Don't. <laughs> Anytime they had cheap burger night. Remember when they would do the either just the hamburgers or just the cheeseburgers for like 30 or 40 cents or whatever it was. Yeah, they did that all the time. And there was a limit. There was like five or 10 was the limit. I forgot what it was. So my mom always had to devise a system of splitting up the cash so that she could go through. I could go through and my sister could go through. How many many burgers did you get? We would each eat like three or four burgers for dinner and then it would stay in the fridge and then we'd eat them again the next night. Just well, because it was a cheap meal. I mean, luckily it's <laughs> McDonald's and these things will survive an ice age. So, yeah. So they, 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 they keep. 
Uh, just like the Burgers Keep, here comes some permanent scores that will also keep. It will be historical record. So this week, at the end of all of your answers, Nathan, you had 11 points. Brian, you had 10 points. But Nathan, you came in with five bonus points, giving you a score of 16. Brian, you made a valiant effort, my friend. You had four bonus points, and you lost. <laughs> Damn it. <laughs> Nathan, 16 to 14 is the winner this week in Uber Cinco top five combinations. And now it's time for your host, which is me, Mitch Brinkman, to do my fast five. Okay, top five things that are best solo. Here we go. Number five, skydiving. I went once, sure, my first time, but had to be strapped to this guy, Kurt. He kept throwing up the <laughs> shocker and asked me multiple times if I was ready to rock. <laughs> Once was enough, Kurt. Then when I asked to do spins after we blew our shoot, he didn't spin me fast enough. Next time, I'm going with me. Number four, singing Wrecking Ball by Miley Cyrus. Don't you ever say, I just walked away. I will always want you. I can't live a lie running for my life. I will always want you. I came in like a wrecking ball. I never hit so hard in love. All I wanted was to break your walls. All you ever did was wreck me. Yeah, you. You wreck me. (laughs) See, clearly, great solo. Number three. (laughs) Of the top five things that are best solo. Plastic 16-ounce beer cups, just like Charmin or Bounty. The brand makes the difference here, muchachos. Okay, number two. (laughs) Accidentally pooping your pants. Nobody knows you. You're alone, you lucky bastard. Good for you. Good for you. Number one. (laughs) It's every sane person's favorite hobby to do on your lonesome. Come on, guys. Yeah, you know what I'm talking about. You mean the all-time number one? Uh, Yes, yes, yes. Uh, When you're solo, it has health benefits. Yahoo News articles say that both men and women can see bumps in serotonin and happiness levels engaging in this just once every three days even. Although, most enthusiasts like myself swear by daily dose, if you will. (laughs) It feels the very best in the bathroom (laughs) like you're getting away with something. But honestly, I recommend getting it in wherever you can. Right? My number one thing that's best solo. Guys, come on. Yell it with me. Reading a good book. (laughs) (laughs) You're all filthy. Okay, that's this week's edition of Uber Senko. Guys, please rate and review our show on Apple Podcasts. And once again, you know what I'm going to say. We love that hearty wom word of mouth. So please tell your friends, tell your colleagues. Tell your distant friends and send them your favorite episode. Thank you to the man that is taller than me and has longer hair than me. That's got to be me, Nathan. Yeah, yes, yes. <laughs> <laughs> and my gorgeous little scoop of tiramisu gelato. Brian Ernst. And I've been Mitch Brinkman. And as Biz Bear always says, sing with everything you have. If they hate it, sing it again in a funny voice. That should get a laugh. Alvita Zane and adios. You've just listened to Uber Cinco, a production of UBK Studios. Subscribe to the show on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Stitcher, or wherever you get your fine podcasts from. If you like what you hear and want to support the show, please visit our Patreon site at patreon.com slash UBK Studios. Every little bit helps us keep the lights on and the bill collectors at bay. Keep tabs on us on all the social media at UBK Studios, and most importantly, subscribe to our YouTube channel so you can see that we really are just a bunch of good Midwestern boys. Yeah.